Moving right along, our next topic to cover after motion would be speed. Uh, speed is a way of describing that motion. So if you know the distance an object is traveling, and you know the amount of time it takes it to travel there, you could calculate speed. Speed is a simple rate. Uh, your formula is speed equals distance divided by time. Uh, you should be pretty familiar with this. Um, one thing I am going to ask you to do is figure out your speed in the 100 meter. So you're going to have a distance of 100 meter and you got to figure out how long it takes you to cover that distance of 100 meters. Then you need to divide the two and you'll get your speed. Um, this is an example right here. We have a cyclist that is traveling at 30 kilometers in two hours. Right, so our distance that we are covering is 30 kilometers. Our time we are covering is two hours. I'm getting that directly from our information provided. I know that speed is distance divided by time. So my distance of 30 kilometers and my time of two hours, I'm going to divide them. Uh, and I am going to get a speed of 15 kilometers per hour. You should note that distance here, my units are kilometers. Oh, sorry about that. My distance here is kilometers. Time, my unit here is hours. Speed is kilometers, distance, divided by hours, which is my time, distance divided by time. And my unit for speed is going to be kilometers per hour. It is extremely important that you have units. The only measurement that uh, we will cover uh, is that does not have units would be mechanical advantage, uh, which is further down the line. So if you leave this without units, I'm going to assume it's mechanical advantage, and therefore you will not answer the question on calculating speed because you gave me a mechanical advantage, which is not what the question is asking for. So be very careful with your units. They are extremely important. You will also note that we are using the metric system here, or the SI system. We will not be using your uh, imperial system or the US customary system in science class. Uh, all scientists use the metric system so we are going to use that as well. There are two types of speed. One is average speed. Here are you can think about our cyclist problem. Sometimes our cyclist is going to be going uphill which means he probably won't be going as fast and sometimes he will be going downhill which means he probably will be going faster. The average speed would be your total distance divided by your total time. So if my cyclist is going 32 kilometers the first two hours and 13 kilometers the next one hour, my total distance would be my 32 kilometers plus my 13 kilometers. My total time would be my two hours here plus my one hour here. And then I would get my total distance divided by my total time to get my average speed. So here we just add up our kilometers, add up our time, and then divide our distance by our time to get your average speed. Uh, next concept of speed is instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed is at any given point, what is the speed of this object? Um, so if I start cycling and I say, okay, at minute one second three, so at one minute three seconds, what is the speed of my cyclist at that given specific time? Uh, that is not your average speed. That is not over a course of time. Your time is very, very stationary there. Uh, we call that instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed you can think of as your car speedometer. That's what your car speedometer reads. It tells you how fast your car is going at that moment. If it takes you six hours to drive 300 miles, then you could be going 50 miles an hour at some point. You could be going zero miles per hour at a stoplight or something. And instantaneous speed is going to be any given time, any given speed at that given time. So what is your speed at a specific time? Uh, next concept is velocity. Velocity is related to speed, but it is very different than speed. You need to realize that speed and velocity are not equivalents. You cannot substitute one for the other. 
Um, however, velocity does incorporate speed. So if I'm going to ask you the question that a snowstorm is traveling at a speed of 25 kilometers per hour, I mean, that's pretty fast for a snowstorm. Should you prepare for that storm? You don't have enough information to answer that question. You don't know what direction that storm is going. Maybe that storm is going away from you and it's already past you. Maybe it is not even anywhere close to you. Uh, if that storm is happening over in Montana, why do we care over here in Pennsylvania? It doesn't matter because we do not know the direction the storm is going. And velocity is going to solve that for us. Velocity is going to give you your speed as well as direction. So your units, you can think of here, my velocity of the storm would be 23 kilometers per hour. That's your speed. And then I'm also going to tack on a direction north. So if this storm is going 23 kilometers per hour north, and it's in Montana. It's not going to come anywhere close to Pennsylvania because it's not going in our direction. It will not go across our country and won't find us. This cold front is not going to hit us. Um, However, if it was going east, then we might get some effects of it uh, down the line, depending on other factors in the weather and if it decides to change its direction. So velocity is speed and direction. Speed is just distance over time. Velocity, you will need to have a direction in your um, units or else I won't know it's a velocity.